Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and today the Yami RPG Editor was released on Steam. It is available for purchase now, not to be confused with the Yume RPG Editor. Uh, I can see both of these being called YRPG, and a lot of people have been waiting for Yume, uh, me included. So I was a bit surprised and a bit floored when I checked my email and saw that I had something on Steam that I had been watching has been finally released uh, out of bed directly onto the floor reading that and seeing Yami RPG because my brain wasn't awake enough to know the difference. But this is a different RPG editor. That said, this is a significant contribution to the world of RPG engines and tools. So I would like to give you my reaction video post thingy right here today as we study the particularities of the information that is all presented right here on the Steam page. So you can buy it right now. There's an introductory offer that ends December 15th, pricing the software at $71 USD, 99 cents. Its regular price after that will be $79.99. Now, if you scroll all the way down, more like this in library, RPG Maker VX, VX Ace for $69.99. If this is remotely the same kind of functionality as this, it will definitely be worth it. That's just the kind of price point we ought to expect with these RPG tools these days. Yami RPG Editor is specially designed for making ARPGs. It has two development modes, event and script. Newbies can choose the event mode for development. Games can be deployed to Windows and the web. Scene Editor, this supports scenes up to 512 by 512 tiles. This is another tile-based engine. Yume is not, so that's why the distinction there. It does support automatic tiles, animation tiles, and normal tiles, just like all engines of this caliber should be doing by now, 2D engines. You can create actors, regions, light sources, animations, particles, parallax images, and tile maps. You can design your own UI layout and interactions. Uh, there is an animation editor, there's a timeline, and you can create sequence frame animations, skeletal animations, particle animations for actors and skills. It supports the paper doll system and any uh, direction animation such as one direction with flip, four direction, eight direction, etc. Uh, it does have a simple particle editor for simulating weather, water, fire, smoke, and more. We're going to watch the videos and show that off. Every file has a GUID and files are read by GUID, so the file name and path can be changed at any time. Those of you who are familiar with Smile Game Builder and RPG Developer Bakken have a bit of familiarity with the GUIDs. Um, this may be why those have to be implemented. Custom attributes, actors, skills, states, equipments, items can customize the attributes. So add the attributes you want, then use events or scripts to realize the function of the attributes you have created. High performance. I created 10,000 actors at random positions in a 512 by 512 scene for stress testing. Added AI that automatically searches for nearby enemies and fights, uh, which was implemented with the event commands. Very cool to add that. The FPS remained at 200. When actor collision system is turned on, the FPS is still over 100. And there is an example of that, I'm sure, in the video above. We'll check it out. Create a thousand actors in a 128 by 128 scene with an average FPS of 1200. It means you can achieve a massive battle scene. And his test environment was a CPU Intel i7-7700, so modest processor. It's graphics GTX 1070, that was the GPU. Very accessible, low-tier GPU. So, good to have those stats included. Uh, script plugin, this uses script. JavaScript as the scripting language. Scripts can be used wherever events can be used, and they can all call each other. The game program does not use any third-party JavaScript library. Uh, it does not have specific gameplay logic, which requires users to implement through events or scripts. So that means you can design the combat system yourself. In addition to the custom attributes, the combat AI, casting skills, using items, equipping weapons, they all have corresponding event and script development nodes so it's very flexible to use. So there are some things needing attention with this engine right now, and the creator is coming out to make sure everybody's aware of that. There's not like a pre 1.0 version number or an early access specification here, just the matters needing attention. It says that the editor does need some time to test and fix bugs. If you want to use it stably, you can wait and see. Game program framework may change frequently during testing. English tutorials are not ready now, and the current version lacks game development related assets. So there is quite a bit here that will need to grow over time. But since these issues in particular are being highlighted right here on the Steam page, 
I have faith that they will be added automatically over time. So if you get this engine now and you decide it's not ready, you can put it on the back burner for a month, three months, come back and see how much has changed, how much has been added. Uh, the important bit here for system requirements, it does require a 64-bit processor and operating system, Windows 10. Only an Intel Core i3 is suggested at the minimum and eight gigabytes RAM, OpenGL ES 2.0 for graphics and two gigs of storage space. So very, very accessible engine with its minimum system requirements. All right, I want to watch videos now. The animation editor looks pretty spiffy, looks very simple, looks very rewarding to use. Thousands of characters fighting at the same time. I probably won't make a game like that, but it's very nice to note that you can Lots of effects and things going on on the screen all at the same time. Silky smooth. It could be used to develop the next Diablo. We've got a particle editor. See that everything is in what looks like Chinese, actually. So I can see I can see the, the limitations of this tool in its early stages. Yes, it's going to beg for localization. Ability to control multiple actions of a character. This is the sort of thing that I expect to be included out of the box with any engine myself but it is nice to see that it does have that. Customizable combat supports both event and JS script development, very good. Visual scene editing for lighting, the lighting system. Lighting system's nice. Very mobile game looking, but I, I'm not condemning that. I'm just, that's the kind of first impression that I get. Let's look at the next video, Let's see what kind of games have been made for example, oh wow. UI functions are implemented with events. It's like we have a buy sell system. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Ooh, combat time. They, he didn't fight. <laughs> Just ran back. Um, skip ahead. Skip ahead, skip ahead. Oh, we have a hot bar at the bottom of the screen. I didn't see that. We have a hot bar and I saw cooldowns in effect. So that is probably, that probably clues you in on the, the place where this engine is going to shine. And that is folks that create ARPGs, action role-playing games, who need to have a hot bar system with cooldowns. Okay, doesn't tell me much. I, I do see lots of clues in the UI as to how things are going. I see a tabbed system, which is really, really nice. I find that really easy to navigate. No need to make it overly complicated. We have an inspector off to the right, which allows you to transform, which they've got a piece of UI selected. Uh, there's image properties. Events and scripts can be tied to that. There's assets, an asset picker of sorts down here at the bottom. Uh, is that an is that a folder for RPG Maker VX Ace? What is that? Uh, assets on the left as well. File tree system. Upper left elements. So the hierarchy of elements that you can see here in the preview window. This is for the dialogue window, and then we have viewer options in the top center. So everything here is very familiar. It feels like it's laid out exactly how it should be laid out. All right, and the next video. We are going to see some more advanced combat. This is the kind of stuff that I would expect to see uh, being lauded, being, being touted by potential users of this engine, game developers who want a game kind of like this. This, this is simplistic, right? But this reminds me of like the MMO sort of vibe this this isn't the mmorpg kind of vibe what is happening holy crap what is happening i think this is just more benchmarking it's just more flexing saying hey look what i can do i get that i want to see more polished examples of the kinds of games we can make i think we can make 2d single player mmorpgs if that makes sense which would be a ton of fun. All right, this video is pointless to me. Let's go to the next one. Next screenshot, here we go. This is a little bit more informative. We have what looks like, if I'm not mistaken, four layers, one, two, three, four, 
plus whatever this means, unless this is the category to which all of these four Roman numeral symbols belong to. So the layers would be kind of like your RPG maker layers, right? Where you can stack things in a single tile space for reasons of, I don't know, accessibility or just having added regions. If you access the tile from, from layer one, then you're still on layer one. If there's collision, then it's for purposes of building things on the map that you can collide with. And layers two, three, and four are just to add more things on top layer-wise, such as bottles to tables. I can't tell by looking at the picture because this could be one layer of tiles and every single tile is just different. Or it could be more likely it's two layers. These pots are probably on the second layer, for example. But I don't know. I don't know if this is using all four layers or if that is what these are. I would like for RPG engines to have more than an arbitrary set amount of layers. I don't think that that's very useful anymore to limit us to like two to four layers. Uh, HUD, actor animation, particle are all tabs here. Let's go to the next screenshots. We've got nine all together. Here we go. This is informative. Hey, that is what I need to see. In the inspector, we see tiles and that's tile map 002. So they're just taking things out of the tile map, placing them right onto the scene squares. I see a little bit of transparency. Presumably those are things that are on a higher layer or a lower one. We're currently in layer three. Next, I see that's layer three. And in this previous screenshot, we're in the box mode. So I'm not sure again, if that means that there are perhaps five layers altogether, that would be okay. That would be all right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't admonish that. Here's for our UI again, this time uh, heads up display. Uh, actor animation, editor, we've got the timeline, which is an extremely useful system. We have easing off to the side, which has to mean that we have uh, Bezier curves, linear, easy ease and the like. That's nice to see. That's really nice. So your animations aren't just going to be linear, which as we saw in the gameplay footage, they weren't just linear single speed animations anyway. So very good. This is the particle editor. Again, this time you're able to edit the emission. Max amount, delay, interval, lifetime. There's a waterfall that's been created here. Uh, screenshot number six of nine. We get to see the event system a little bit, uh, but this is code form. So a bit of the JavaScript without much context. Just a screenshot of the JavaScript editor, no problem. I guess next, screenshot seven of nine shows us the same thing again, just kind of showing off the JavaScript. I, if I only had nine screenshots, I don't think I would have devoted two to that. Uh, eight of nine, we have the exact same thing. I guess the devil's kind of in the details. We get to see some of the capabilities of this. Uh, if this is one of your first tools, this sort of thing might be really, really cool to see. And it is at least reassuring to see that these I would call them basic functionalities are included. Uh, and it does seem like it's pretty approachable. This actually, this might be put into place based on events that you choose. Because I know that in other engines, if you are, if they support both scripting and eventing, if you lay out your events, you'll get to see what they look like in script form. That might be happening here as well. Can't tell. Uh, the last screenshot that we have to look at is giving us a list of plugins. And we also see that we are in the background here. We're actually in the audio browser and the inspector is showing us volume pan reverb um, of the sound as well as a waveform preview and a frequency preview. Interesting. So, and then we have six plugins, movement path, a debugging tool for drawing movement paths, path color, trigger shape, render, health bar, damage number, flash effects, smooth camera follow. So it looks like in this case, plugins are probably more just, just functions that you can add. They're really no different than RPG makers plugins. And that is Yami RPG editor, a simple, flexible, high performance 2d game editor that can make ARPGs, turn-based games, tower defense games, all without coding. Okay, okay. I I like what I see here. I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to delve into this anytime soon. 
and the price tag makes it a bit hard for me to justify it right now, despite it being an introductory offer. When other tools like RPG Maker VX Ace are being shown to me with the price tag at $69.99, it's easy to see why the price tag, like it justifies it almost immediately. It's like, that's what this tool needs to cost these days. Uh, but it doesn't mean that, you know, we're, we're ready necessarily to buy it day one. But the high performance examples here are extremely hopeful. And there's a lot of stuff here that offers all of the basic functionality you would come to expect. Uh, and then the 512 by 512 tile maps, that, that's pretty big. You probably don't need to have a game that has tile size that big but you can if you want and yeah that, that's a nice to have right there all right i will definitely look into this more as more information is revealed as we get past the bumpy spots of the engine and if there are any major updates i'll be sure to cover those but right now you can get yami rpg editor and you can use it right away deploy games to windows or the web and possibly help the developer work through things like bugs that you find or feature requests or fleshing out existing features there is likely a community somewhere around here not linked on the steam page but there might be one somewhere out there uh if i could find one i'm definitely going to join it so that's it for me for now i'm out of time thank you very much for watching please let me know what you thought down below and i will see you in the next video until then have a fantastic rest of your day bye for now